let's just talk people through what we're discussing at the moment, this so-called relief package for Australia Post you're pushing for. This allows Australia Post to only deliver letters every second day because of a reduction in letters demand right now. What is that actual reduction in demand, though? Well, letters have gone down. Um, they went down 36% in May and about 30% in April. But as much about letters, Tom, this is about helping all that parcel growth. Um, you know, today, letters are just about 20% of our business. Parcels are about 60% and they're booming. With many small businesses in this really challenging time, depending on Australia Post, to get delivering them mm. and faster. So when you say down 36% for May, we note it was an election last year in May. I'm assuming letters were up in that particular period, a lot of mail outs happening. Is it fair to compare May versus May? Is it a true 36%? Well, it's a good point. You know, every month has something one off. But even if you strip out any benefit of an election the previous year, it's still down 27%. And that's a multiple of the 9% that they were declining pre-COVID. So either which way, this is an acceleration of letter decline, while at the same time, mm. our parcel part of our business is booming. Look, a lot of people these days might only check the mail every two or three days. It is seemingly, for a lot of Australians, less vital, but there's also that need sometimes to get documents very quickly. What happens to that express post uh, service if you do get this relief package? Absolutely. Express Post will continue to be delivered every day. That's actually counted as a small parcel. So that will go every right. day. PO boxes will remain the same. Rural and regional Australia will remain the same. And, you know, picking up on your point, Tom, you know, most Australians, well, in fact, the average Australian only gets a letter every other day. What we want to do is free up our posties, get them safely into vans, not all of them, about 2,000, into vans so they can get delivering parcels and we can be faster. And how categorical can you be about jobs? This has been the pushback from the unions that Labor's picking up on. A figure of 2,000 redundancies has been put out there. Will there be any redundancies from now until June 30 next year if this change is in place? We have given our commitment to the unions, to the Labor Party, from day one on this, there will be no forced redundancies. There will be no pay cuts. We want our valued posties. We want them just to do a new role. We want them to get delivering parcels. That's critical. It's particularly critical as we go through this next few months, which is going to be economically mm. challenging. Can I share with you something, Tom? May I? You know, sure. I've just come off a call with Adelaide, and we are looking at a $20 million investment in Adelaide it will be the first time in our 210-year history that we will have invested in automation and parcel sorting equipment in Adelaide. That's going to bring more jobs. I want my posties to be part of that. I want them to be able to start delivering more of the parcels and we don't have to keep outsourcing it. Right. So, And when you talk about no forced redundancies, do you imagine there might be voluntary ones as the business shifts, and we're not just talking about COVID here, but from letters, very frequent letters to parcels, would there naturally be a slimming down of the overall workforce? Well, we haven't slimmed down our workforce and we haven't in over 10 years. And actually we see, we don't see a need for a smaller workforce. We actually, what we want to do is start less outsourcing and more of our own people, our most trusted posty delivering. The reason why I said no forced redundancies it's because typically yeah. our union partners would say to us, Christine, if you're making such a change, why can't you offer some people a voluntary redundancy who may need it? I don't want to lose my posties. I'm doing that to keep them, but keep them in meaningful work. Just finally, you're pushing, obviously, for crossbench support. I'm sure that's part of your mission here to Canberra. Do you have it? What's the fate of this legislation? That's down for the crossbenchers to decide. It's not me, but I, I would ask them to seriously consider this. It's really important, not just for Australia Post, 
not just for the future of our posties, but helping these small businesses in Australia, like our licensed post offices, remain mm. economically viable through a difficult few months ahead. But what can you tell us about what their response is to your push at the moment? Well, I think it's for them to decide. So forgive me for not responding on their behalf. 